to you. This is February the 15th of 2024. Good morning, and I trust you have your hot cup of coffee with you, and you have your copy of the Word of God open to the Gospel of John in chapter 20. The Gospel of John in chapter 20, and we have come to the cornerstone of the Christian faith. This morning, as we read the scriptures, if this chapter is not true, our faith is vain. And so, again, we will be reading John chapter 20 in just a few moments. And as you are turning in your Bible to the Gospel of John chapter 20, here is our vocabulary for the day. The, today's word is hogwash. The word is hogwash. Another name for a pig's laundry. Hogwash. Okay. That was pretty bad. So we're going to put that away. And beloved, I'll tell you what, when we start reading about the resurrection, number one, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection of the dead. And that's Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. And from there, we understand that without this truth, our faith is vain. And it is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that is available to you and I to live a victorious Christian life. And so, again, it is 9 o'clock. We're going to bow our heads before the throne of grace. We're going to lift our hearts before God. And, beloved, to remember that he is alive. Let's pray. Father, it is with great joy we come before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the resurrected one. Father, over the last couple of days, we've been reading about the passion of our Lord, what he endured because I'm a sinner, because we're sinners. And Father, today, we have the glorious truth to read about the resurrection of the dead, to re the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by the same power that you have made available to us in order that we might live victoriously in this world. Father, I thank you. I praise you for this passage, for the truth that we are reminded of. And Father, it is based upon the resurrection that we can come before you, that we can ask that you work your will and your way in our lives, that we can live for your glory. And Lord, we pray to that end. And Father, regardless of how it may be that you desire to use us, Father, number one, make us willing. Number two, use us. Use us as you see fit, regardless of what that means. Lord, it is for your will that we pray. Life can be hard. Many times it is. But Father, you're greater. Thank you. Keep our eyes focused upon our Lord and Savior. Keep our eyes on Jesus the author, the finisher of our faith. Father, we pray that you're, by your grace that we would be faithful to you. Father, as we read your word, as we read about the resurrection and the appearances of our Lord and Savior, Father, help us to understand that one day, certainly these bodies will be laid down to rest. But the day is coming when they will be called forth and resurrected by the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Help us today to live in light of the resurrection. We ask these things in Christ's wonderful and holy name. Amen. If you haven't guessed, I'm excited. I'm excited to read about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. We're in John chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh 
Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen cloths lying. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, and your father, and to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again the disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. 
Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Beloved, sometimes I tell my congregation to use their sanctified imagination to bring to life some of these biblical events. For our purposes today, I want you to think what it must have sounded like for Mary when she is crying before the tomb and she heard a single word the tone, the feeling, the familiar voice saying simply, Mary, that she turned and recognized her Lord. What an event. What an experience. That must have been. I can't help but think how many times previously the Lord had said, Mary, using that tone of voice. And then at the sepulcher, that same voice, that same loving, caring, compassionate voice. Mary. She immediately recognized Rabboni. That is to say, Master, we serve the resurrected Lord. Beloved, today, 2,000 years nearly after the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, he is alive. What a joy. And by the way, Christianity is founded upon that very truth. And now, as the disciples, as various generations before us, it is now time for you and I, to rise up and, here is our word, be faithful. Please, be faithful to the resurrected Lord. And never, never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from our resurrected Lord. This mighty God loves you very much. We love you as well. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.